It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about financial laws, like the laws of gravity and physics. There are a lot of financial laws that you need to consider when building your financial plan, everything from accounting for inflation in your portfolio, watching out for those pesky bond funds. As you know, Bob and I don't like bond funds. We're going to talk about financial regrets. We're going to discuss some of the bigger financial regrets many retirees have so you can avoid those same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And we're going to do our spotlight segment this week where our financial advisor, Emily DeValent, is on the show. She's going to talk about a case she worked on and talk about how so many financial advisors love to talk over you and talk above you and how that just makes for a very, very bad relationship. So check it out. We've got a great show for you today. You know, Bob, there are a lot of laws or rules we typically abide by when we're building someone's financial plan. So I thought we could talk about some of the more important financial laws that our listeners should be abreast of. And a big one is the law of rising taxes. Taxes can be a huge hindrance to your financial plan. Hey, Ryan, never heard of the law of rising taxes. I think you're speaking of the CPA Full Employment Act. (laughs) Yes. All these law changes keep the accountants in business. In fact, I talked to a CPA the other day. And he's like, man, it's just so much more complicated right now. And I'm saying, well, that's good for your business. So don't complain. I've been hearing that from CPAs my whole career, right? Hey, even 50 years ago, the Beatles wrote a song called The Tax Man. There's one for you and 19 for me. I'm the tax man. It's always going to be a problem. It's always going to be a problem. So it means it's a problem you need to address. And it's true. When you get to retirement, and a lot of us have a lot of money in 401ks, retirement accounts, And the dirty little secret is when you're 70 and a half, you have to start taking that money out and paying taxes on it. And that's why we call your retirement plans a ticking tax time bomb. Well, Rod, that's why I changed all of our advisors' title from FA to TPA. (laughs) TPA, what does that mean? Tax protection advisor. I mean, we make more money for our clients protecting them from the IRS than we do making money in the market, or maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. No, I think that's it's huge because, you know, and it's not one of these things where you just do one big change to your portfolio and all of a sudden you save on taxes. It's really those little things you do over time that really add up and can have a huge impact positively on your retirement by just making a couple tweaks in the portfolio here and there. I call that kind of supercharging your portfolio, Bob, making those pro tweaks from a tax perspective. Couldn't agree more, Rye. Right? It's like uh, having a financial plan is not about you know, just the end in mind. It's the little things you need to do every year. And you really need someone to guide you to make sure those little things get done. Because if you miss one opportunity, you miss it forever. And hands down on your portfolio, there's probably a lot of things from a tax perspective you're just not thinking about. And literally by just looking at the big picture, we can find a couple things and we can change those things. That's the difference between being in a lower tax bracket in retirement and a higher tax bracket. I don't know about you, Bob. I prefer to be in a lower tax bracket when I'm retired. Just saying. Hey, Ryan, I just met with a, a, a new client this week. And literally between the you know hidden fees you didn't know about, the taxes, unnecessary taxes he's paying... We're going to save this family close to $100,000 a year without doing anything different to the portfolio. That's crazy. Like, we all need to know these things. You know, there's so many hidden costs and so many things from a tax perspective. Ah, oh, Bob, just makes me go crazy. Another big law that we uh, talk about when we're talking about financial laws is the law of inflation. You know, one of our biggest enemies is things are going to keep costing more, especially when we get to retirement and in retirement. Well, you know what investing, right? It's good versus evil. And the evil, most evil thing there is, is inflation. It's hidden. It's insidious. It compounds. It's always there. But there is a superhero that work against it. There's a superhero to work against inflation. But I, my guess is going to be gold, right? I saw those commercials. No, no it's not gold. You know gold. <laughs> you can't eat it. Can't carry it around. Doesn't pay you a dividend. Then you got to pay somebody to store it. Certainly not gold. So, Bob, I should disregard all those gold commercials I watched this week. I'm a little bummed out. They just said it was the best investment you could possibly have. So what is the best place to put your money to combat against inflation? It's compounding of interest and dividends. There's nothing more magical. And unless you have it, you're never going to be able to overcome inflation. 
Well, I think it's more dangerous than ever right now. You have two things working against you, and that's number one. It's good news, bad news, but we're living longer. That means you could be retired for like 25 years on average. That means that you have to account for a lot more cost of living, and you have interest rates at low, low levels. So you're not getting any return on your money sitting in cash. So to your point, Bob, you need to figure out a way that you're growing your money over inflation, and sitting in bonds and cash right now is just not going to do it. No, Rob, there's never been a better inflation fighter than rising dividends. And it's the rising of dividends, the compounding that comes with you know, the additional dividends and stock buybacks that make equities the greatest inflation fighter in the history of the planet. Right. So that's the question you have to ask in your portfolio. Do I have anything that has a rising cash flow? Because we, you know, we rip on annuities a lot, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> we did a big segment on annuities two weeks ago. And the problem with an annuity, it sounds great, you get income for life. Like who doesn't want income for life? The problem is it's the same income for life, but your cost of living and your expenses are going to go up over time and that doesn't account for it. So you need to evaluate your portfolio, ask your financial planner and say, hey, do we have anything in here that's a rising income type of investment? Because if you don't, that's going to be a big problem when you're retired. You know, Rob, you're so right. It's not just about making money. You know, you don't need an advisor just to make you money. It's about preserving your principal. And there's a lot of evil things out there that are trying to take your principal, one of them which is inflation, it's taxes. You need to have advice that preserves that principal for life. That's right, which brings us to our last law. That's the law of market movement. Bob, I'm going to tell you something that's really ingenious. Markets are volatile. How's that Holy for crap. insight? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's say, let's alert the news media. <laughs> so we know they're volatile, right? I mean, it's, it's no secret markets are going to go up and down over time. And the problem is you and I can't control that. No, you can't, right? And really, when it comes to investing, there's two things you can't control and something that is need to recognize to be a successful investor. And that's number one, time passes. And number two, markets operate. And this happens every day. You have no control over it. And by the way, neither of which care anything about what you think. That's right. That's right. So if you think the market's going down, you think it's going up, well, the market can do the exact opposite. So good luck there. But the one thing we can control, Bob, we can control the risk or volatility by structuring our portfolio the right way. And I think that's the key here. Hey, Rise, you know and I know that the uh, investment gods created volatility to keep the uninformed poor. So the one thing that all of you can do is become a more informed investor, become a more educated investor, and understand that volatility is your friend. It's not your enemy. I met with a gentleman the other day that had all his money at risk in U.S. stocks, which have done really, really well. And I congratulated him on that. But I said, guess what? If this is like 2008 or we get another big market correction, you're out of luck. And I asked him, what do you do the last time the market went down? He said they didn't look at their statements for two years. <laughs> like, well, that's, that's fine terrible... when you're your age, right? But when you're my age, you need income. And a lot of these growth stocks don't pay any income. So how does that work? Exactly right. So you have to manage the risk, especially if you're getting close to retirement. And remember, in retirement, you can't have the portfolio of 10 years ago. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com. Get a clear picture of your finances. I guess, you know, it got open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, an engineer who helped build the Titanic once said, even God himself could not sink this ship. I suspect he regrets saying that now. Hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. Hindsight, yes. Hindsight is twenty twenty, especially with investing. So I thought we could discuss some of the financial statements people make that often come back to haunt them. And the first one that we hear often is, I told myself a few years ago that I'd get out of the market if I ever recovered what I lost in 2008. 
But now I think I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. You know, right. First of all, you know, the market uh, in 2008 peaked at around 14,000 on the Dow. We were at 27,000 just two weeks ago. So I think that uh, that ship's already sailed, so to speak. I mean, if they were going to get out, should have got it out a couple of years ago. That's right. And I think there's two driving emotions that are always helping us make our decisions. And it's usually fear or greed. And you have to ask yourself right now, if you've done really well the last 10 years, are you being ridden by greed? Because like I was talking about that person I met the other week had all his money in growth stocks. He's killed it in the market, but he's doomed to repeat history if he doesn't make tweaks to his portfolio because of the risk. You know, right? I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm a baby boomer. Really, Bob? I thought you were uh, just going prematurely gray. Oh, no, it's actually boring gray. I'm going prematurely blonde, but that's a whole other <laughs> topic. But, you know, as a 66-year-old, when I look in the mirror every day, I still see an 18-year-old, and I know all of my buddies do the same thing. And that's the problem. You know, we as you get older, you have less time to be successful as an investor. And as you get older, you should be more conservative. And you know what? My fellow baby boomers are not doing that, and that's something we're coming across almost on a daily basis. Yeah, it's so important to understand what you own right now because you know the one thing we do is we build that spreadsheet where we can see all the different accounts you have at different places and we can see where your risk concentrated right now. And odds are you probably have a lot of concentrated risk right now. That's what we're finding. And it's those proactive moves you make before the market goes down, Bob, that really help you. It's not waiting for things to get bad because at that point it's too late. No, you always have to have a strategy with the end in mind, right? You have to invest with a purpose. You know, you have to have a portfolio that's built to achieve your goals, not to, you know, make money. You know, making money is not a goal as it turns out. Yes, right. That is like, what does that even mean? Right? You can go to the casino and say, I'm going there to make money, but that's that means nothing in terms of what you're gonna actually need to live on in retirement. And it's really important to determine that. Like I spoke to another client the other day and he said, you know, I don't even know how much risk we should be taking in the portfolio. We're taking too much too little. And I said, let's sit down and look at the numbers. You want to retire in five years. You're going to need X amount a year to live on. And we looked at his portfolio and I said, look, we only need to get a return of like four or 5%, which means we don't need that much money in the market. Why take more risk than we have to? Hey, Ryan, I couldn't agree more. But you know, here's another regret. I like the security of keeping my money in cash because I know at least I won't lose it. What do you think of that? Bob, cash is trash. <laughs> Write that down. Repeat, repeat. Look, I don't care if you're getting 2.5% on your money market fund. First off, you pay taxes on it. So now you're down to less than 2% return. And we talked about inflation in the last segment. You're losing against purchasing power. And that is like the worst thing you can do when you're trying to build a retirement plan and live off your money. Hey, Rye, you're absolutely correct. And no matter what that money market rate is, I'll tell you one way, it's only going one way right now, and that's down. The Federal Reserve has been cutting interest rates. They're probably going to cut again. And that's not the solution. Right, you have to overcome inflation. You have to have your money grow. You have to have a diversified portfolio. You know, hey, cash is something you need in an emergency, right, Ryan? Yeah, but I think the problem is after two thousand and eight, we got a little too aggressive with our emergency fund. Right, instead of maybe keeping six months of expenses, all of a sudden we have a couple hundred thousand dollars, Bob, sitting in cash, and we just can't seem to make a decision on that money, and that's really hurting you right now. Like You have to start making a decision. You can't sit with these big balances in cash. It doesn't work. Hey, Ryan, I met with a new client last week, and for the last couple of years, they've been saving money in their checking account to have as an emergency fund. Well, you know, as it turns out, he's 68 years old. He should be contributing to his retirement account because at 68, you don't have any penalty withdrawal. So you have a tax-deferred savings account as opposed to putting it into the bank. You know, these little things make a huge difference because now you're deducting it against your taxes. You're putting in a position where you don't have to pay taxes on the return. And something he said, Bob, I had no idea that we were able to do things like that. Yeah, and there's simple things, right? Like, number one, take advantage of what tax benefits are out there. But then you have to figure out how can I make my money the most productive, right? And that's the key here. And you can do that, Bob, without a lot of risk. That's the misconception because a lot of us think that, oh, then I have to put all my money in the market. And when I put it in, it's going to be the top, like 2008. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to feel bad about it. I'm going to be back in the same position, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there's a lot of ways to generate income where you're not taking astronomical risk. You know, right? Here's another statement you'll live to regret, and you'll live to regret it if you live, because the statement is nobody in my family has lived past 75. So I'm not really planning to live a long time either. Well, if you can figure out your, your date of death, we can build the perfect estate plan for you where the last check you write to the IRS bounces 
but I don't think any of us are that good that we can figure out exactly the year we're going to live to. Yeah, it's almost universal about families. Every generation lives longer. You know, we live better, we eat better, we have less stressful lives. Well, some may disagree, but we also have huge strides in advancements in healthcare, and that's only going to get better. So, you know, the thing is, do you feel lucky, right? And that's the key. I mean, if you're going to plan on living to a certain age, that's not a good idea. You got to be more optimistic because chances are you're going to live a lot longer than you think. Yeah. And I think the one thing you have to add in your projections, because if we are going to live longer and maybe you do have health that's not as good, that means you're probably going to have more medical costs. It doesn't mean you're not going to live as long. It means that we have to account for big medical costs in retirement. You have to have a number in there, Bob. You can't go through retirement without factoring in. What if $250,000 came out of my portfolio for medical costs? Can I still maintain my lifestyle? If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our total financial master plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. We have a very, very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor, pain capital management, Emily D. Valent. Em, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. It's not enough that we have you on the show. I like that intro. I think this is how you should intro me every single day. I'm going to keep a recording of this. <laughs> we sit very close to each other. Maybe we we'll just walk in the office. We'll just give you a big shout out and... It could be amazing. I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> I like the fact your ego is just All right, Ryan. Right. I, want, I want Emily on every week. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, keep it coming. <laughs> so, Emily, this is our spotlight segment, and every week what we do is we take a real case, a real financial plan, and we uncover the flaws or pain points so you, our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. And you worked with one of your existing clients, mm-hmm. and you were to help them. Want to give us a rundown on the case and what you did so our listeners can benefit from your, your wisdom. Absolutely. So I met with a couple. It's a husband and wife. Uh, I've been working with the husband now for a few years, and the wife is actually just retired. And so she kind of wanted to get on board, get a little bit more familiar with the assets and the investing process. Ooh, I love that because we just talked about this. How many times do our the spouses leave their other spouse in the dark? And here you are making sure the other spouse is involved, especially with some of the planning decisions. Yeah, absolutely. I think we see it more often than we should be seeing it, where you know one spouse kind of has control over everything and, and knows more than the other. So I definitely think it's important to make sure that both people are on board. Yes. So we met, I talked, went through just the wife's assets in this particular case. And, uh, you know, it was the same thing that I had kind of mentioned to the husband a couple months ago when he had decided to retire. So we went through the income gap and just diversifying the investments, um, pretty standard. But at the end of it, she said something to me that kind of resonated with me, which was she thanked me for actually speaking to her in layman's terms because she had met yes. with a couple of different advisors over the course of you know a few months, six months, when she wanted to decide what exactly it was she wanted to do with the money. And she said I was the first person that spoke to her in plain English and didn't try to sound smarter than, than her because that doesn't make her feel good. Isn't that the worst thing about our industry? It's just we use all this fancy language and the person on the other side of the table, just their eyes glaze over. And it's just the worst feeling to go to your financial advisor and be like, ah. Oh, I never understand this person. They're always talking above me. 
Yeah, uh, completely. And I think they they start to lose interest at that point, too, because they don't understand. And sometimes they're afraid to ask questions, which it is so important to ask questions. I mean, if you go to a doctor and they start talking to you with all those big medical terms and you don't ask questions, I mean, how are you supposed to know what's going on? You know, that's, a, that's a great point. It was um, it was reminds me of the, of the case that Chris worked on a couple of weeks ago where they called the advisor and said, you know, we're really concerned. You're getting close to retirement. We really want to review our plan. And he just flat out said, no, you don't. You don't need to do it. I'm, t- I'm taking care of it. Don't worry your little head about it. I mean, it's like the most condescending <laughs> thing in the world to tell someone that, uh, you know, I'm going to take better care of your money and you don't need to know what I'm doing. I mean, it's just it's horrible. Yeah. And I just out of curiosity, so you have the spouse involved. Mm-hmm. So what transpired by getting the spouse involved and getting her on board with what's going on with the finances and obviously in layman's terms? Mm-hmm. Well, now, you know, the wife actually moved over the money. So she moved over the 401k and we've been kind of going through the investments and she's invested now. And I think she just feels so much more comfortable being involved. And now we can talk. It's the three of us. So any email chains or phone calls, everyone's on board. And I think she's not afraid to ask questions, which is great. Yeah, and that's a nice thing too, because if, if you have the money you're managing in a concert, as opposed to this account over here, it's not part of the plan if it's not really accounted for. And we always talk about how important it is to have all your assets working together as opposed to disparately. I mean, that's such a key point when it comes to building your financial plan or your investment plan. Yeah, 100%. And I think too, you know, God forbid something were to happen to the husband in this case, a couple months ago, she wouldn't have understood any parts of the plan at all because it hadn't been explained to her in terms that she understood. So I think it's just important for everyone to really understand what's going on and, and to make sure that, you know, your advisor isn't just trying to sound smarter than you and kind of saying, you know, like Bob mentioned, oh, I'll take care of it. You don't need to know anything. Well, you know, I think that um, what I like, I mean, I'm looking at the analysis that you've done for this couple and looking at the wealth projection, not only did you explain to both spouses, you know, what it is they own and, and how it works and why they own it, but they're able to see you know, because of how the returns are generated from the income that comes from the bonds and the dividends that come from their stock portfolio and how that compounding net of inflation shows their portfolio value going up every year, even as their spending goes up because of inflation. So they're able to see, not only understand from you what they own in, in you know layman terms, but also see the implications of what they own and now understand exactly why they own something so that uh, they're able to stay patient and stay invested you know, through these volatile markets. Absolutely. I think it really helps the relationship going forward, Bob, when, you know, you have explained it from right from the beginning and they can see it right in front of them and they understand why we're doing things and how we're doing them. And, you know, going forward, if if they have any questions, you can always kind of, they can revert back to what you put in front of them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as Bob would like to say, it's another financial (laughs) masterpiece. Excellent job on this. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish.
Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.